Hello grade tens. In the previous video, I gave you an introduction to naming chemical compounds. In this video, we're going to focus on naming ionic compounds. Now, Miss Martins, what are ionic compounds again? Remember, ionic compounds form when we get metals combining with non-metals. That's when ionic bonding takes place. There's a transfer of electrons. Let's take a look at how to do this. The first thing that I need you guys to understand and do is I need you to take a periodic table. If you don't have one already, you can check out the link in my TikTok bio where I link my Google Drive with my periodic table that I would like you to download, print, and make the following notes on. We're going to start on the left-hand side of the periodic table. And over group one, which is this first group over here, we're going to write a plus one. Then we're gonna write a plus two. We're going to skip this middle block over here and I will explain why in a later video. Then we're going to write plus three. Then we're gonna write plus minus four. Then it's minus three, minus two, minus one, and finally zero. What you guys just wrote on your periodic table, these are referred to as the charges of the elements that fall under that group. Now, what do I mean by charges? Another word for charges is valency, just by the way, in case you ever hear that, valency. But I mean, me saying that doesn't exactly explain what I mean. So I'm going to take a very easy example, sodium chloride, which just happens to be my favorite compound. So sodium chloride is NaCl. This is the compound molecular formula, or the compound formula, NaCl. I'm going to explain to you how did we get NaCl? Why is it not Na2Cl or NaCl2 or NaCl3? Why not? We know that water is H2O. So why is NaCl, Na and Cl? Well, the reason and the answer lies in its charges. Now, grade 10s, what I need you to understand is all the elements on the periodic table those in group one, group two, transition elements, which are these guys in this middle block over here. This, these are called the transition elements essentially, and it does extend a little bit over here. In group, this plus three group, the plus minus four, the minus three, the minus two, the minus one, all of those elements in those groups, they are striving to be stable. They want to be like the noble gases. And if you don't know what the noble gases are, they're the guys with a charge of zero. Every single element wants to be like the noble gases. The noble gases, they don't want to bond with anyone. It does get a bit more complicated than that, but in general, they're happy by themselves, they're stable, their outer energy levels are full. Now, ma'am, what do you mean by outer energy levels? Remember, atoms contain a nucleus in the middle, with protons and neutrons. Then in the outer orbitals or the outer energy levels, they contain electrons, which are negative. Some elements contain more electrons than others. Some atoms contain more electrons than others. Some, the outer energy level, so the one on the out, 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 outside is full. Those guys are called noble gases. They don't need to lose any electrons. They don't need to gain any electrons. Their outer or orbitals, their outer energy levels are full, which means they're chemically stable. That means they don't need to bond. Why do all the other elements need to bond? So for example, why does sodium feel the need to bond with chlorine? The reason is because their outer energy levels are not full. They are not stable. However, when they bond with each other, they can transfer electrons. Sodium gives away an electron. Chlorine accepts that electron. And through that transfer of electrons, they can reach stability. Let me show you. For ionic bonding to take place, so remember, that's when a metal bonds with a non-metal, the following needs to happen. We have one element that'll lose one or more electrons and form a cation or positive ion. Now, great tens, listen to me carefully. If you have electrons, electrons are negative, and you lose them, 
So we're losing them, we're giving them away. You're losing negative stuff. You're going to become more positive. That's why you form a positive iron. And this is how we remember the name of a positive iron. Positive ions are called cations. How do we remember this? Cats are positive. Positive, positive. Cats are good. Cat ions are positive ions. Now, what's an example of a positive ion? Sodium. The sodium ion. Na+. Plus. Guys, sodium ion is a positive ion because sodium loses an electron. Therefore, it has lost one electron, so it gets a little plus. We could also say magnesium is a cation, Mg2+. Plus. Now, why does magnesium have a 2 plus? Well, magnesium has lost two electrons. And just look at how cool this is. Sodium loses one electron. Sodium is in the first group. It has a charge of plus one, like we wrote at the top. Magnesium is in the second group. There it is. Magnesium can lose two electrons. That's why it has a charge of plus two. When sodium loses an electron, do you see that sodium currently has, I don't know if you can see because I've scribbled all over it, but sodium currently has an 11 on the top. That's the number of electrons in a neutral sodium atom. If sodium loses an electron, it doesn't have 11 anymore, it'll have 10. And it'll have the same electron configuration or electro number of electrons as neon. And what's neon? A noble gas. It's pretty cool. If magnesium, which initially has 12 electrons, you can see over there, if magnesium loses two electrons, why will it lose two? Because it's got a charge of plus two. If it loses two electrons, think about it, 12 minus two is 10, it'll have the same electron configuration as neon, which is a noble gas. So those are cations, they lose electrons and become positive. Anions gain electrons. If you are a neutral atom, and someone gives you electrons, you're getting negative stuff. If you get negative stuff, you become negative. So you will form a negative ion, which we call an anion. And why? How do we remember that? Anion sounds like onions, and onions make you cry. They're bad, they're negative. So an example of an anion could be Cl minus. That is a chlorine atom that has gained an extra electron. That's why it's got one minus, just the little minus sign over there. If we look at the periodic table, this makes sense. Look at chlorine, look at the group that it's in. It's got a charge, there's chlorine, it's got a charge of minus one. Right, so can you guys see an example of a anion with a charge of negative two? Oxygen or sulfur, how do we write that? Well, the oxide ion, which is oxygen when it gains two electrons, is O2 minus. We put the two in front of the minus. It's just the way we do it. All right, it's notation. It's just how we write it. O2 minus means that the oxygen atom has gained two extra electrons. And again, if we look at the periodic table, look at where oxygen is. Oxygen has a little eight. Don't know if you can see it. It is a little eight above. That's eight electrons, neutral oxygen atom. If it gains two electrons, it's going to have 10, which is the same as a noble gas neon. Right, so what have we learned? We learned that charges form when atoms that are neutral gain electrons or lose electrons. You can form anions or cations. Positives are the cations, negatives are the anions. Group one, two, and three. So here we've got group one, group two, Group three, they form cations, which means they give away electrons to reach noble gas structure. They're giving away the negative, so they become positive. They form cations. Here's sodium. It forms a charge of Na+, that's the sodium ion. Here's magnesium. Magnesium gives away two electrons, so it forms Mg2+. When we look at group five, group six, and group seven. Those refer to these groups here. The one with the negative three, the negative two, the negative one. Those guys, let's take a look. What do they do? They need to accept electrons. 
Remember, they're going to become more negative. They're going to form anions. Anions, onions, onions make you cry. For example, chlorine, Cl-, which means it gains one electron to reach noble gas structure. Oxide ion, we've done this example, is O2-. They need to accept two electrons to reach noble gas structure. So they have a charge of two minus or minus two. Doesn't matter. So why does this help me? If we think about sodium chloride, for example, sodium chloride, sodium forms Na plus one. Why? Because the sodium ion, it gives away one electron. It's Na plus, so it has a charge of plus one. Chlorine needs one electron, so it has a charge of minus one. If you can see here, plus one, minus one gives me zero. It needs to always give you zero. Always. Why? Because sodium chloride is a neutral compound. If you look at sodium chloride over here, it's neutral. It doesn't have any charge up here, so it must give you zero. That means for every one sodium, it bonds with one chlorine. The sodium, the one sodium, gives away an electron. That chlorine accepts that one electron forming sodium chloride. Sodium, so the cation is sodium. There we go, cation, the positive ion is sodium. Sodium, Na, comes first. The cation always comes first. Just think about it. Cats come first, rather than onions, anions. Sodium comes first, and then the anion, the element name, changes to end in ide. So remember, Cl is chlorine. But when it bonds, it becomes chloride, and it forms NaCl. One sodium atom bonds with one chlorine atom because the one gives away one electron, the one accepts one electron. Cation written first, anion written last, and there you have it. Before we move on to the next video, here are some common anions that form and some common cations that form. If this confuses you, you just need to look at the periodic table. I'll show you one example using the table. If you look at bromide, the bromide ion, obviously that comes from the atom bromine. But why does its name change to ide? Because remember the anions come at the end and their last name changes to Eyed, like a bride that's getting married, their last name. And anions come at the end, it's the surname, it changes to eyed. Now look what it says over here. It says Br minus, which means that it needs what it has gained one electron. And does that make sense looking at our periodic table? Well, we know if we look at our periodic table, the things that we drew on top of our periodic table, we drew a plus one, a plus two, we skipped the transition elements. We said plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Look where bromine is. There it is. It's got a minus one. And that's why when it forms its bromide ion, it's Br minus. If you look at sulfide, for example, either spelling is acceptable. We've got S2 minus. Look at the periodic table. Look where S is. Sulfur is over here. There's sulfur. There's sulfur. Look at where it is, what group it's in. Minus two, which means it's gained two electrons. That's why the sulfide ion is S2 minus. And the same thing works with the cations. So again, if these tables help you, please take them down. I will be discussing these ones with the brackets in another video. Awesome guys, don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it or you learned something and comment down below what you would like to see next. I'll see you in the next one.